A lot of customers ask us why these head gaskets fail so much, on, especially on the hybrid vehicles. Uh, I'm about to tell you why. There's something in thermodynamics called linear thermal expansion that basically states that as an object heats up, it expands. Uh, that's the reason why you have breaks in the curbs just walking down the street. Those little gaps in the curbs, the gaps get bigger in the wintertime and they get smaller in the summertime because the concrete actually expands as it warms up. Same thing happens with the engine. Aluminum uh, has a linear thermal expansion that is way higher than um, most other metals. So as the engine's heating up, this little gasket right here, which is where the head gasket goes, gets crushed. So the aluminum expands outward and the block actually expands outward as well. The problem is these head bolts, they're high carbon steel. The linear thermal expansion on these bolts are not as much. Actually, they expand only about half as far. So you have these bolts which hold it down even tighter, all while the block and the head are crushing against the gasket. Now that's normal. The difference in these hybrid engines is this thermal expansion happens rapidly multiple times a day. And if you're a cab driver, Uber or Lyft driver, and you're stuck in traffic, this expansion will happen hundreds of times a day. So the way head gaskets are designed, let me open with today, Scarborough head gasket, this is the brand we use, best one in the business. Now let me show you these ridges on a new head gasket. So you see these ridges, especially like right here, where the cylinder walls are. These little ridges are on both sides, top and bottom. Now what those do, they create like a, a cushion between the block and the head, that as the block and the head heats up and it expands into each other, the gasket is designed to compress. Now, as the, as the uh, engine cools down, when the engine's off, contraction happens and the block and the head move away from each other. The head gasket is designed to bounce back. Now, if you're stuck in heavy traffic all day, it'll compress, bounce back, compress, bounce back, hundreds of times a day. Over time, this is a used head gasket right here. Over time, these little ridges stay flat. Now as the ridges, as the head gasket stays flat when the engine cools, it's still going to contract away from the head gasket, but except, instead of bouncing back like it should, it stays flat or only bounces back a little bit. So now when the engine's off, you get coolant starts seeping through. It causes a little gap and coolant seeps through. Now, much like uh, when you're bending a hanger, um, you, it, everybody's done, you bend, it, you bend a hanger as a kid or a small piece of metal. You bend it slow, nothing's gonna happen really. It's, got, it's not really gonna break. You start bending a hanger quickly, the metal is going to fatigue and it's going to break. That's what the fatigue's happening with the head gasket. All the uh, uh, expansion, contraction, uh, con uh, expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction, it's gonna fatigue the head gasket. That's also why these same engines, these two ZR engines, um, in the Corolla, in the Pontiac Vibe, or in the Toyota Metrix, uh, they don't blow head gaskets as often because when you start the engine and the thermal contraction happens, it compresses the head gasket. You drive 30 or 40 miles to work, depending where you are, it stays compressed the whole time until you get to work. So it still happens and fatigue still happens over time, but a lot longer of a time goes by before the, uh, the non-hybrid engines blow head gaskets. So it's not a problem in the design of the engines, it's the application of the engines. These engines are designed to turn off and come back on two, 300 times a day if you're stuck in traffic, if you uh, are an Uber or a Lyft driver, five, 600 times a day. It's just natural. These little grooves, they compress and they stop bouncing back up. So then you start getting the little blow by that happens on these head gaskets. The little grooves aren't there, just seeps right into a cylinder. So now when you start up the engine, you'll have 
three cylinders working well and one of those cylinders had coolant leaking in. So now you have three cylinders, one misfire, and that causes the rattling noise. The knock, that's just the dual clutch inverter on the side, but it'll shake for the first 10, 15 seconds until that coolant is finally um, moved out of there. Once the coolant's moved out, it's still gonna be leaking into the cylinder, but not so much that it's gonna cause a misfire. Shakes for the first 10 seconds or so, then the engine runs smooth again. Sometimes when you come to a stop sign and the stop sign, uh, not stop sign, a uh, stoplight, and it's longer than 30 seconds or 40 seconds, and the engine stopped, more coolant can leak in. Now when you go to take off again, it's gonna cause that misfire. Not as much as if the engine was sitting overnight, but cause a misfire nonetheless. So that's exactly what happens that causes these head gaskets to fail. The engine's amazing. I've seen uh, some of these engines up to 560,000 miles. It's just when they're in the Prius, because they're designed to use less gas, you're gonna have to replace the head gasket every so often. These videos are for the DIYer, uh, the do-it-yourselfer type. Um, I hope you follow the videos and I hope you um, have a lot of, of uh, success with these videos as well. If you still feel uncomfortable dealing with um, the head gasket or the EGR replacement uh, yourself, take it to a shop. Um, but now that you have the knowledge, you can ask the mechanic or the service writer um, um, more questions uh, and see what they know. Try to avoid mechanic shops that say they're going to try this or they're going to uh, take it apart and see or maybe this is going to fix it because uh, each time they work on it you're going to have to pay for it if you don't feel comfortable in the mechanics knowledge take it to the toyota to the uh, toyota dealership and um, use them of course you're going to pay a bit more uh, but it's probably worth it um, they deal a lot uh, with these engines also it's their engines they probably don't do as much as we do but at least you'll feel confident in their ability to fix it at least I hope so. Thank you for watching.